circulation. So we have won one millionth the amount of currency in circulation. And it's still worth a lot more. It's buying us all a lot more. And people serve one another because they want to. And we're far more productive, we find out, under this atmosphere, under this spirit. We're saying, I want to work. I'm not going to withhold my work because, well, this guy doesn't want to pay me. Or I, can't, I don't have enough business out there. You're not worried about those things anymore. None of us are. We're all free. That's what we got to work toward, folks. That's what I really want people to understand is just, you know, we can never extricate ourselves from this unless we confront it. And we can't rightly confront it unless we're very clear on the issues, unless we're not confused, unless we're not ignorant. And we've got to blame correctly, blame the kingpins of the problem. It's a satanic problem at, and at the end of the day. And it's all these minions of Satan, the spirit thereof. The enemy, the, these witting, these people that are wittingly evil, they, they say, yes, I'm a deceiver, and I'll do whatever it takes to keep my power. And I don't care if you find me out because I'm going to fight tooth and nail, you know, like a cornered rat to keep my position and my place here. I'm going to keep stinking up the joint, and I'm going to keep being a royal pain in your neck as long as I can because misery loves company. Yes, I'm misery, miserable. Anybody that abandons their conscience is miserable. So these people are, are, are deathly miserable. And they want you to be like that. And I'm saying, no, I'm going to love everybody. I'm everybody's friend. I'm on everybody's side. I want to be the nicest guy anybody ever met. I'm not that guy now, but I'm striving. I know what I want to be, but I'm not going to lose my passion, my passion, okay, in the process of being the nicest guy you ever met. I care. I really care. And it's really tough when I see people that I know are super smart missing the mark. They're not getting it. And so the whole thing, it's like they're throwing the bath baby out with the bath water and they don't even know it. They don't even know the things they're fighting for they, if they don't understand the kingpins involved here. What we're after, the target, it's not for some. It's not just say, hey, tax are lower, that's good for me. Or Trump brought back businesses, that's good. We got more jobs, so it's a little better. You know, no, we got to work on the whole thing. Your currency has to increase in worth. We can't be chasing our tails forever, needing cost of living adjustments. And I hear people out there say, oh, this is bad. Raising minimum wage is going to cause inflation. Well, why in the hell? What happened? That's not what caused inflation in the first place. Wages have been sorely stifled, as I pointed out earlier in the last set of videos. Okay, I mean, if you go back 50 years and look at minimum wage, $1.50 an hour, that's the equivalent of like 50 bucks an hour now. How I pointed out, a bus driver in San Francisco making over 100 grand a year can't afford to be a homeowner because the median price for a home is over a million dollars. They won't qualify. Do you understand? This is insane. This is insane. This is where we are, nevertheless. And it ends in a bad place. Of course, the communists out there that blame capitalism because they're confused, because they're ignorant, they're going to fight tooth and nail for social socialist programs. We need more social welfare. We need a minimum guaranteed wage, right, income. They're going to fight tooth and nail. And who can blame them? You're, it's up to you to take them out of confusion, but you're not going to do it just by convincing them it's good that we get a few more factories in America and, you know, we're, you know, we're going to put a, a Band-Aid on the, you know, the middle class who has an abrasion instead of, you know, and ignore the people dying out in the cold. No, then I would say, no, the communists are absolutely right. And conversely, I would say, you know, that the crony capital is full of crap and they don't have any kind of argument at all. For what they're saying, they're the types like Rich Dad that say, just go along with it. Hey, the government is subsidizing me. And even if he doesn't accept Section 8, the industry, the fact that the industry is subsidized has so much to do with what they call the going market rate. Do you understand how it affects the rent you pay, what you pay to purchase a home is directly affected by this government subsidy to Rich Dad and his ilk? Do you understand how this works? Once you do, I want you to focus on the purveyors of this, on the monsters at the very top. These are the Federal Reservists, and they're sycophantic, starry-eyed minions, these politicians who just want to stay very close to them. They vote themselves raises. They don't care that they're destroying our currency. They just want to stay in their position of power, and they're willing to do anything to get it. Remember, they don't care how many people die. 
Okay, if you pinned him down and say, look, you could keep your position in, pay, in place. You could keep all the wealth, this ill-gotten gain you've accumulated, these billions and trillions of dollars you have the, you know, the, the power over, uh, or you know, uh, uh, nine tenths of the world population could die tomorrow. Believe me, a lot of these people would take their position in place and the money, okay, and let nine tenths of the population die. So, you know, you're up against some monsters here, okay, bar none. These are as bad as they get. That's as vile as it gets. These are the people that, too, will stand one on one before God and He will decide where they go from here. But if they're not found worthy to inherit the surface of the earth, they're not going to get it. So, this is serious business. This is about where we go from here ultimately. So when you decide whether you're an elitist or an egalitarian, remember, one or the other, not both, you be very clear who you're going to stand before. Not before me. You're going to stand before the one that owns you, your creator God, the potter. Understand the relationship. You are pottery. He is the potter. He is the owner of all things. That includes your soul, not just your body, not just your physical life, everything. Everything he owns. The only thing I ask before you decide which side of this thing you stand on is just remember the implications, okay? Just remember, you know, that we should not fear any man. The only one we should fear is the one that can throw body and soul into hell. And that's reverence. That's a good kind of fear. That's a, a safeguard, a fail-safe. Your conscience is at stake here. Your soul is at stake here. Your honor, your integrity, who you are throughout history is at stake. So it's a big deal. Now I want to shift gears and talk about uh, some of the current events and some of the thoughts I've had this past week. Well, we had this, uh, this meme come out uh, in the news, this uh, business about uh, trying to besmirch Donald Trump's character, about this, uh, the, he's compromised by the Russians uh, through these golden showers purportedly. Uh, you know, I mean, it, this is the most absurd thing in the world. And even if this happened, I mean... Give me a break, folks. I mean, let's grow up a little bit. I mean, everybody's got their twisted fantasies. I mean, who out there, you know, is perfect, okay? So even if this happened to me, I mean, he's not going to let this, uh, you know, he's not going to allow himself to be compromised by the Russians over it, even if there was a videotape of it. People will say, oh, well, that was pretty stupid. You know, uh, I hope he learned that uh, that wasn't a lot of fun, whatever. You know, you just hope people learn from the stuff they go through in life. But we're all sinners, okay? None of us have any business judging that, but we don't have to be wicked. We don't have to be evil. And these are the people I'm talking about, these deliberate deceivers. They believe they're smarter than everybody else when they're not. The pe people that are really intelligent are kind, compassionate. They're nice people. They're egalitarian. They get it. They understand, look, this is about pleasing God, because ultimately he's the grantor of true happiness. So this right to pursue happiness is a right to, uh, essentially, to please God. I want to God to be wholly pleased with everything in my life. And if I've got sin and he's not pleased, I don't want it. It's not going to bring me happiness. It's a vice. And thankfully, he understands these things better than I do, okay, because he, he's more forgiving and more merciful than me. You know, it always falls in our court. When we sin, it always ends up on our head, on our conscience. We can't blame anybody at the end of the day. This is the way God made it. This is, this is a, a perfect plan. In our weakness, His strength is perfected. So we all have carnal instincts. We all are fallible, and we all fall in many ways. Okay? But we're not all evil. Okay? And when, when we are, when we do say unbecoming things... Uh, unseeming things, you know, we, we behave in unseeming ways, okay, um, then we have to turn to Him and, and for forgiveness. We need forgiveness. We need to understand this great mercy and compassion and love that He has for us. It exceeds anything anybody can ever offer us or that we can ever offer anybody. So at, at the end of the day, we are accountable, first and foremost, above all else, to Him, to God Almighty. That's it. That's the only one we have to really answer to. and we, This is one we should look for gladness of heart and true, lasting happiness. Okay, that's not fleeting. It's not just about frolicking on God's green earth for the time we're alive and being rich and prosperous and having fun and neglecting other people. We can't do that because that's ignoring your very conscience. And it will never lead to happiness. We've got to care about the least of men, as Jesus clearly pointed out. 
whatsoever we do or fail to do. For the least of these, you do or fail to do for me. So that's why I do what I do. I want to feel worthy. I want to be worthy. I want to be deserving of inheriting a better world. I want to ready my own self, my own soul, my heart, my mind, my spirit, my essence to go to, to be ready for that world. So it's not traumatic. So it's not like a thief coming in the night when things are overnight, they're changed. Okay, when this renewal of things takes place, like Jesus said, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. The perishable will meet the imperishable. Right now we're walking around in these bodies of death, these mortal bodies that just rot. We all know they could be dead today. There's no security. It's very precarious, very tenuous existence in the physical body. But the promise is we're going to have these imperishable bodies. So there's great promises here for everybody to latch on to. And we need to do that. Okay? We really need to give a damn. But anyhow, I guess the point is, is you know, I was making, is that they're trying everything they can to, to invalidate his authority as, as a, as a commander-in-chief already before he even goes into office. So I still think it could be that Obama is somehow going to find a way to finagle his way to stay in there a little longer. If we're talking about biblical prophecy, this is what I think we're at. If you listen to guys... Hell Lindsay, for example. I don't agree with everything he says. He believes in capital punishment. Okay, I don't. Okay, but listen to guys like Hell Lindsay, the Hell Lindsay report. Listen to guy Gerald Flurry. Sunday mornings, I see him here in California on the CW channel, 9.30 a.m. I love to listen to this guy. Okay, but these are people that have devoted their lives to the study of Bible prophecy. And if you want to know what's going on, I mean, you've got to, you've got to understand how close we are. And remember, no matter if we are or aren't close, maybe it's five years, maybe it's one year, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's 100 years, I don't know. But we know it's coming. Eventually, all the prophecy in Bible is fulfilled. So Jesus Christ will return. We will have this renewal of all things. The, where the perishable meets the imperishable, and where this separation of the wicked from the righteous, and the, and those that didn't make the, sh didn't make the grade, they're gone, man. They're all together in hell. All those elitists. So remember, when you decide whether you're an egalitarian or elitist, you better be very clear about this. This is not about religion. Remember, it's about being cosmic, cosmically true to yourself and true to your Creator. To admit that this is there's a lot of wonderment out there, and you know, knowing there's a lot of a uh, blindness out there. You know, there's a lot of confusion, and you've got to help people. We've all got to do our part in helping people come out of Babylon, come out of confusion, come out of the ignorance, and make it very clear. Let them be empowered. Make it very clear who the kingpins are here, it, who are the main players in this thing. And these are deceivers. These are the money printing class and all their minions, all their political minions that go along and validate the things that they do. So let's see, we got the, yeah, Obama, you know, condemning the Russians, expelling the diplomats. Okay, really, that's very rude uh, and, you know, very childish in my mind. I, 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 I don't have any regard for the man, but, and I, and I really believe Obama is written about in Bible prophecy. I mean, now it, that, that's a little bit, you know, that, that's a little foreboding, I think. To say, you know, end days, end, end of the age, that's it. That's all we're talking about here. We're not talking about, you know, the end of the world here. We're just talking about the end of an age and the beginning of a new age. So if Trump is a precursor, then you're going to see egalitarianism work. You're going to see, you know, this, this hemorrhaging wound on the collective body of humanity being bound up. And we're going to see this rising tide of prosperity across the board. That's what you want. That's what you want to see. The evidence is that your currency increases in worth steadily, perpetually, until... It's a means to an end, till we're all free. A great prosperity, great security, great freedom, and we don't care about money anymore because it's worth so much. Okay, that's it. And it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. Fort Lauderdale, five killed by a psycho terrorist. That was in the news. Um... Let's see. Oh, you got the mainstream media reporting that, oh, hiring is up, but unemployment is on the rise. Can you believe this comes out of their mouth at, in, the, in the same little piece that they shot? This is the kind of stuff they're reporting. Uh, I mean, this is madness. And it's any wonder that we're not all completely stark raving mad, don't know up from down, right from wrong at all? 
I mean, it, this is the kind of crap they're feeding us. Aren't the mainstream media, these are supposed to be the educators, right? These are the ones that are informed. They know the news. They know what's going on in the world. They know the rhymes and the reasons for the policies we all have to live under, right? And these are the ones that are going to teach us, and they come out with this crap, utter nonsense. I mean, this thing can't end well, folks. We can see that. Ever-increasing debt just chasing our tail. Where do you think it's going? Ever-increasing wealth disparity? Ever-increasing poverty? And you think this thing is going to end well? You think it's not going to end in communism?